three and a half years ago in December, excuse me, in June of 2017, I quit my last job to be a full-time stay-at-home mom with our then 13-year-old son. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. I ended up having a period of like a week when I got all of these phone calls, emails from young people I had worked with in various capacities over the years asking me for career advice. And I thought this is so inefficient because every time they ask me for my advice, I'm basically reinventing the wheel to each one of these people who I'm speaking with. Where's the platform that they can go to to hear career advice, to learn about different jobs in different industries? And I searched around and I couldn't find one. And then I thought, well, I'll just build it. And so in February of 2018, I started building Time for Coffee, which is shorthand for, do you have time to meet for a cup of coffee so I can ask you about your job or career? And I started interviewing hundreds of professionals in dozens of industries. And to date, I have now this massive library of hundreds and hundreds of professionals that I've spoken with. And through the course of interviewing each and every one of these people, I began to see all these cross-cutting themes and patterns. And I thought to myself, I'm not hearing people connect these dots. I need to connect them. And so I do that in the podcast and I also do that now every day on LinkedIn. This is specifically targeted to job seekers who are currently juniors and seniors in college, who are still in college. And my advice to them is to take a deep breath and then get centered on who they are and what they're interested in. Next, I tell them once they're centered and they've shut out the noise from their parents, from their friends, from their professors, from TikTok, from Instagram, that they need to identify and get clarity on what are the careers, what are the industries that might interest them. And I deliberately use the word interest and not that they're passionate about because truly most college students haven't yet identified what their professional passion is. It's a process to get there. After that, I have them write down three industries, three careers where they'd be happy to work. And most importantly, I tell them that rather than wasting their time and energy, worrying and stressing about whether this first step will be a career that they love for the rest of their lives. In other words, whether it will be their future career with a capital C. I tell them, is this something that they'd be interested in doing for the next year or two? In other words, career with a small C. Is this something that they'd like to do for a brief period of time. And the reason that I say this is that a few things are gonna happen. Either they're gonna start their first job and decide that they hate it, or they're gonna start that first job and say, I like it, and they're gonna continue doing what they're doing, or they're gonna like their job, but they're gonna learn about another kind of a role, maybe in that same company or in another industry that might interest them even more. And actually I described all of this in a post that I made this week, that finding a career you'll love is more like being a mad scientist than it is being 
a chef, someone who's following the same recipe over and over again, because a mad scientist is someone who is testing and iterating and experimenting and maybe even blowing some things up figuratively, I hope, because I am convinced that each of us is unique. And so finding a career isn't as straightforward as it is when you're making a recipe. First and foremost, I want to share my insights and my advice that I haven't found anywhere else. I try to write it up in a way that is accessible to college students and young professionals. And I also try to write to my second audience, their parents, because I want the parents to appreciate what their kids are going through. They see it from a perspective where they're also, the parents are also feeling tremendous anxiety. And they're also thinking about careers based on their own experience. And what I hope that they will recognize is that careers, because I have a higher perspective, maybe that 10,000 foot perspective that I've heard hundreds and hundreds of professionals share their journeys and share their lessons learned, I'm able to put things into perspective. So hopefully parents will ease off their pressure, maybe even their advice to their children and trust that these college students know what interests them. They know what they like and they know what they're good at. And if they don't, I also try to write about that. So my thought process is try to think about what isn't already out there. What am I not seeing anybody else write about? And I also keep a list of post ideas. So I have a running list in a Google spreadsheet. And if I don't have an idea that's front of mind, the night before, because I either try to write the post the night before, or I try to bulk write them one day of the week. And then I sit down the night before and I love the writing process and do my best to try to make it entertaining, maybe even fun to read, but with actionable tips and big takeaways that are practical for my readers. The posts in which I try to lift the veil and share my humanity, my vulnerability with my audience, my struggles over the years. For example, just recently, I posted about my own depression and the fact that this is something that right now is under control. But a couple of years ago, I had gone off my antidepressant medication because I was feeling so awesome. And without realizing it, it had seeped back in. And I began the post by showing a photograph of me at a big conference where I was one of the keynote speakers and I'm smiling. And if you just looked at the picture, you would probably think, that I was super happy, everything was going great in my life. But behind the scenes in my own brain, I was incredibly sad. I was super depressed and didn't realize at that point that my depression had come back. And so it was really just to share with my readers to be gentle with others. And while you may feel maybe even a twinge of jealousy or, oh gosh, somebody else's career is going better than yours, you never know. You never know. So try to lead with the generosity of spirit and not try to assume that you know what's going on in someone else's life. And the other kind of content that I think resonates with my readers are the posts in which I try to speak truth to power. Another example, recently I 
wrote a couple of posts in which I was calling out college career centers and perhaps even more importantly, college administrators, those with the power to allocate resources to college career centers. And the fact is, these colleges have let college students down. They've let their most precious commodities down because they are sending these young people off into the working world, not career ready, in my opinion, and certainly among those students that I speak with. And by career ready, what I mean is much more than just teaching them and showing them maybe what a good resume looks like. It involves teaching students how to break down the walls that have trapped them into little boxes known as majors. <laughs> you know, you're known as a history major, you're known as an English major or an econ major or whatever fill in the blank major. And they should be showing them that their majors are the foundation of their future careers. They're not the tiny boxes that they're going to be forced to live in for the rest of their lives. And even though this is a more labor intensive process to help young people break down their hard skills and their soft skills, I feel this is where colleges and universities are really letting students down. What I try to tell college students is that they are not giving themselves the benefit of the doubt. They need to learn how to translate the experiences that they have had, whether it's having scooped ice cream, worked as a server, as a dog walker, as a, somebody who's worked in a parking garage, parking cars, all of these experiences are fantastic. And you can translate them and put them into a language that hiring managers and prospective employers will resonate with. So you just have to learn how to tease out what you've learned, the hard skills that you've learned and the soft skills that you've learned into a language that those hiring managers will resonate with. And then be able to talk about, share some stories about the experiences that you've had using that language. So I actually think that many young people, whether it's having worked in a part-time role or a full-time role, or having been involved in clubs and extracurricular activities, having been on team sports, volunteering, working in youth ministries, whatever it may be, all of those are real experiences that you can put on your application. Just use the language that those employers are going to understand. <laughs>